preso mai un morto in braccio, quella mattina ho preso anche un bambino di tre anni, ancora con gli occhi aperti. Io pensavo che era vivo, pensavo che riuscivo a salvarlo e invece era morto. 2023 has been the deadliest year for migrants crossing the Mediterranean since 2017. In 2022, more than half of those that took on the world's most treacherous migration route departed from Libya, a country that has been embroiled in conflict and civil war for nearly a decade and about a third from Tunisia. By June 2023, Tunisia had overtaken Libya as the gateway for the highest number of migrants heading for Italy, which has served as the primary destination for those trying to reach Europe in search of a better life. Tunisia's worsening economic, political and social crisis, as well as the recent crackdown on sub-Saharan Africans in the country under President Sayed, have contributed to the rising number of people seeking to leave the country. The human rights situation in Tunisia has uh, degraded quite significantly in the past two years uh, since uh, the power grab by President Sayed. We have seen uh, President Sayed attributing to himself powers, extraordinary powers, uh, that he is using to, to uh, reduce the space for civil society, for the opposition, uh, to uh, exercise their rights. President Sayed made uh, an infamous speech uh, against refugees and migrants, which uh, marked the, the, the beginning of uh, a series of violent attacks uh, uh, against refugees and migrants. In the first half of 2023, more than 44,000 migrants reached Italian shores, but not without great loss and sacrifice. C'erano persone che gridavano, c'erano delle tavole, era buio, non capivo niente. E quando c'è solo la luce del telefonino c'erano dei, dei morti per terra, ma c'erano bambini, soprattutto bambini. The UN has documented more than a thousand dead or missing in the central Mediterranean in the first six months of 2023 alone. We are very satisfied with the joint declaration of the European Union with Tunisia uh, that was adopted today. It is an important first step towards creating an, a true partnership with the European Union that can address the migration crisis, but also development for both sides of the Mediterranean. Italy's Prime Minister Giorgio Meloni paid a visit to Tunisian President Kais Sayed as her far-right government continues to seek ways to stem migration from the North African country. Italy is promising Tunisia greater facilities and resources for coastal patrols, which Amnesty International has described as another step towards a dark road for Meloni's government as it continues to encourage an increasingly repressive leader and turn a blind eye to human rights abuses. If cooperation uh, strengthens the power of President Sayed uh, without considering that how he is using this power, then basically this is a green light for uh, increasing repressive measures against uh, the civilian population. We know that the European Union, Italy and Tunisia are currently negotiating a deal. Now, the terms of this negotiation are not available yet to the public, but there is a risk this deal may focus on returning third country nationals to Tunisia. Now, this would be a very bad idea. It should be sufficient to say that Tunisia has not even ratified the Geneva Convention on refugees and therefore has not built an adequate system to provide international protection. So how can Europe even think about sending asylum seekers to Tunisia is unfathomable. In an attempt to create a deterrence and limit undocumented migration to Italy, the Italian Parliament passed a government decree that sets out a code of conduct for NGO rescue ships restricting their rescue efforts. Under the new measures, rescue ships' ability to carry out multiple rescues in one mission have been curtailed. 
Each ship must sail directly to a specified port to disembark after a rescue, rather than remain at sea searching for other migrant boats in distress. Organizations violating the new rules can face fines up to 50,000 euros and have their vessels impounded. We are observing this uh, uh, um, cynical policy of delayed uh, response to um, servants, uh, sometimes uh, no response at all, um, and this is uh, uh, endangering uh, further the life of people uh, who are uh, just in need of uh, rescue. Uh, maritime law is clear, there must be no uh, distinction whatsoever uh, based on the, on the status of the people in this sea or on the circumstances. Everyone who is in danger must be rescued uh, without uh, any unjustified delay. So this uh, uh, practice must stop because uh, what we uh, see is that this is uh, uh, not uh, uh, preventing uh, people from uh, taking the sea. You will have people that will die. Uh, they will not enter to Italy. So if this is the aim, uh, well done. But uh, what is the, the price we pay? That people will die at sea. It goes against uh, the international law. It goes against the European law. There is a duty that uh, everyone has to rescue people in distress at sea. So we are in contact also with, uh, with the Commission uh, to really challenge uh, the previous decree on a legal ground. The Italian government also declared a six-month state of emergency to be backed by an initial funding of 5 million euros intended for the management of migrant arrivals and repatriation facilities. This allows the right-wing government to repatriate migrants faster and issue expulsion orders to those not allowed to stay. The problem with that is that uh, Italy doesn't have bilateral agreements with uh, most of the countries uh, where people are coming from, so the repatriation is not possible unless you have a bilateral agreement like Italy has with Tunisia. And so these people we are, are just condemned to stay in this repatriation center for an indefinite period of time. And we know that in these centers, the rights violations are rampant. Italy's aggressive approach in addressing the search in irregular migration to Europe is not an isolated one. Rather, it is a reflective of a wider rise of the far right in Europe and harsher attitudes towards migrants. From Greece's pushback and crackdown on migrants, to Hungary's border fence and the UK's planned deportation to Rwanda. By hindering rescue efforts, seeking to block refugees from leaving countries such as Tunisia and focusing on repatriation without sufficient bilateral agreements with countries of origin, Italy and its European backers are compromising their obligations under European and international law, leaving the fate of thousands hanging in the balance.